if we can jump into the book of Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. We're going to start from the very top of Matthew chapter 4. And we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If you feel comfortable standing, you can stand. If you feel comfortable sitting, you can sit. However the Lord leads you. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Then the tempter approached him and said, if you, are, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. He answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down, for it is written, I will not give his angels order concerning you, and they will not support, and they will support you with their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus told him, It is also written, Do not test the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, I will, I will give you all these things if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus told him, Go away, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and began to serve him. I titled this message, I Pledge Allegiance. I Pledge Allegiance. You may be seated. I Pledge Allegiance, a promise to be loyal and truthful. Promise to be loyal and truthful. I get it. The title's like, you already was like, I pledge allegiance to the flag. I know. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Every mind went there. But to pledge allegiance is to, prom to make this promise to be loyal and truthful to the living name of Jesus, to King Jesus. And here we see the devil. Uh, uh, first, Jesus is led to the desert by the Holy Spirit. Jesus is led to the desert by the Holy Spirit. And this is after 40 days and 40 nights of prayer and fasting. It says clearly that Jesus was hungry. After 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, you, my friend, will also be extremely hungry. And I was interested to, to, to understand, like, why would it say that? Obviously, Jesus is hungry. But it's important for us to understand as the church that we have heard the story of Jesus being led to the desert by the Holy Spirit in a, in a, in a very important moment after he's baptized in preparation for ministry. Because right after the 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, Jesus began his ministry. And it's important that we prepare an understanding of how important it is to prepare ourselves for ministry. But I also have to ex explain to you, and I want you to understand, that not everyone, after they give their lives to Jesus to begin their ministry, will go through the wilderness. This is a specific case that was for Jesus. It doesn't mean that now because you have, you're baptized and you're going into a, a, a relationship with Christ, that you're going to go into 
the desert. If that's the will of God for you, let it be the will of God. But not is not the case for everyone. There are cases that people begin their first love in Jesus, and they don't feel a thing. They're like, glory to God in the highest. I'm baptized, and there's no trials, no tribulation. It's all good. But some people truly do go through a desert. In this situation, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. Know that every season of your life is led by God. And he knows what you need in order to proceed to the next level that he has for you. And he knows if you need joy, if you need peace, or you need some things to be shaken up. Because it is the will of God in our lives that we say yes to, even if it looks difficult, even if it looks challenging, even if it looks joyful. Lord, whatever you have for me, I will do. And I say yes. And it's important that we understand that. Because here is for us to remain faithful. To remain faithful unto the calling and what God has for us. There are times that God has a desert for us, but there is also a time that God may have a time of joy. But it's for us to walk in his in faithfulness and remain faithful to our king. The first temptation was with bread. If you are the son of God, this is how it starts questioning his position as also God, but also man. If you are the son of God, the devil is declaring and knows that he knows who Jesus is, but he also knows that Jesus is 100% man. So he is naturally hungry. If you're hungry, why don't you convert these stones into bread? You can do it. You are powerful. You are mighty. You can do this. And, and the, 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 then Jesus replied back that man shall not live by bread alone. And this is an important information that we have to catch here because the devil may offer you things in the physical, but there's something deeper in the spiritual that we have to connect to. And I love how Jesus, and it's also printed here in Scripture, for us to differentiate the two. One is of the flesh and is what of the spirit. Of course Jesus was hungry, but there's a bigger purpose why he was fasting. It's so that his spirit can become stronger and greater for the greater calling that God has for him. First temptation was with bread. Man provides his own bread. That's the mentality that our culture has today. I provide my own things. I work hard for what I have. I depend on my own. And, and this is not the attitude to have. We need God to be our provider. We need God and we depend on him to be our provider, our daily bread. He will provide everything that we need. Man provides his own bread. That's the, the mentality that this, our culture has today. But in the Jesus culture, we depend on God. We depend on Jesus. This is the, the culture that Jesus has established for us to be dependent on him as the living bread from heaven. The manna from heaven. Man going after creation and not the creator. This is what we're talking about today. Man going after created things. But the church goes after the creator. The church of God who is planted and dependent on him, that pledge allegiance to the king, knows that we are dependent on Jesus and Jesus alone. For we are not after creation. We are after the creator the creation doesn't have the power. It is the creator who has the power. He spoke things into existence. Let there be. Let there be. Let there be. Let, the, let man receive life. And it was the breath of God in man. And that's the life that we are enjoying today. The life in Jesus. The breath of God. The breath of God in man. So we depend even on the breath of God to breathe our last breath. To continue to breathe. Why? Because he made us. Us, and we are dependent on him. Remain faithful to him. God sustains me. I want you to say that right with me. God sustains me. Say it again like you believe it. God sustains me. Because sometimes we go into life 
with a plan, with a mission. ABC, yes, this is going to work. But I want you to understand that God is your sustainer. That even if things get taken away, God sustains me. He will provide. I will not be shaken because I remain faithful to the king. He will not leave me. He will not abandon me. He will give me what I need according to his will and purpose. According to his will and his purpose. He provides all things that we need. I'm not going after other things to sustain me. I believe that he is a trustworthy God. I'm not going after created things. I'm not going after things that I believe this is going to put me on to the next 15 years of my life. No, 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 no. I can have a plan, but that can fail. And what sustains will always will be there is my God, my Savior. Jesus will always be there. I, I have heard people that have come and I have conversation with and they lose it all. They lose their peace because they, they are anxious to know what is my future going to look like now that I lost my career job. I've just been fired. I've been there 10 years, whatever amount of years you've been there. And all of a sudden, whew, that has been taken away. But I want you to understand that even if, if it's given or taken away, know that God has given and he has also taken away. For we do think everything unto God. To him be the glory. If he provided once, he will provide again. And he will not leave me or abandon me. He will provide every moment of my life, every season of my life. He will provide what is needed. He sustains me. He is trustworthy. I trust him and I will remain faithful unto him. Fear not. Church, I want you to fear not. For God is the Lord of my life. For God is the Lord of my life. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 6, let's read that again. And Satan said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will, he will give his angels orders concerning you. And they will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus told him, it is also written, do not test the Lord your God. This is profound here. This is a profound uh, statement the devil, Satan, tells Jesus. You know that God is going to take care of you if you throw yourself from here from the pinnacle, from the very top. He says, if you throw yourself, the, the word says it. But where does it sit? Where does Satan get this scripture from? And this is quoting verbatim from scripture because Satan has nothing, that he's not a creator. He is a copycat. So he has to take and distort the word God spoke. So he uses what is already created that comes from God and distorts it. But where does he get it from? If you go to Psalms chapter 91, and this is a prayer David was made to the Lord. A prayer. And this is in Psalms 91 in the Old Testament. Check this out. 91 verse 11. And he is, Satan just quoted this in the desert. Check this out. For he will give his angels orders concerning you to protect you in all your ways. They will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lions and cobra, and you will trample the young lions and serpent, because he, ha he, ha he has his heart set on me. I will deliver him. I will protect him, because he knows my name when he calls out to me, I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and give him honor. I will satisfy him with all a long life and show him my salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, Psalms is speaking about Jesus. I will cover him. I will protect him. And we read it as if for ourselves. Yes, God will protect us as long as we're not tempting God. It's not to tempt God and God is going to save me regardless of what I do. That's taking advantage of grace. 
But if it is truthful, God will protect you. God will keep you from harm's way. And you will trample on serpents and, and snakes. You will not fear no evil. Why? For the lo Lord is with you. Satan is quoting the Psalms and bringing it and throwing it in Jesus' face. Doesn't it say? Wasn't it already declared? And Jesus says, that's a good one. But you shall not tempt your God. Don't do that. Don't go there. How far can I cross the line? No, no, no. Don't tempt the Lord. How far can I take it with this relationship that I'm not supposed to be in? How far can I go with disobedience? How far can I go without being in the will of God? Uh, I'll be back later. No, no, I'm going to enjoy life for a second. How far? Do not tempt the Lord your God. We don't play with God. We honor God. We surrender to him and we say yes and amen to his will and his call. Why? Because it's already said in his scriptures. The devil comes to distort the same word of God. And if you're not solid on your allegiance to Jesus, our faith will be shaken. I will stand firm and say, yes, Lord. I will stand and pledge my allegiance to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. No matter what the devil throws at me, I will remain faithful unto him. And I will not fear. Church, I want you not to fear. We do not have the right to decide if we live or die. We don't have this right. That right belongs to God and God himself. He has life and death in his hands. We cannot make a decision to take our lives. No, no, no. That's not our decision to make. That is a lie of the enemy. There are suicidal thoughts that come to the mind of our generation today. Your life will be better off without you being here on earth. I want to tell you that is a lie from the devil because your life is in God's hands. Just surrender to him. Surrender to him. Suicide is not the answer. Jesus is the answer. Don't tempt the Lord your God. We do not have to fear for the trajectory of our lives. God is in control. Don't worry. Don't fear about the journey in your life. Your trajectory before the, in your life is in God's hands. We don't worry. We walk by faith one step at a time, one day at a time. And Lord, I give you my life. I give you my journey. I give you everything that I'm, I'm trying to establish, Lord God. But I want to do your will and your will alone. Lord, you know I want to be married one day. You know, you know, God, you know, you know. You know I want this relationship to work, Lord. You know, you know, it's difficult. My marriage, Lord God, I need you right, right now, and I want to see it flourish. I want to see it grow. I want to see it blossom, Lord God. I need you right now. But fear not, church. Fear not. My children are lost. What do I do? I'm, I'm worried. Don't worry. Don't fear. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Believe and depend on him. He, he is with us. He's with you. He's in control. We choosing to take our control of our own dest destiny is idolatry. Us trying to take control of our own lives is idolatry. I can do this. I can do this. I don't need God. I've done this. And we see stories after stories in Scripture of man elevating himself <laughs> greater than God or trying to arise statues and, and, and things for man to worship and God always derails and brings them to submission. Why? Because God doesn't share his glory with no one. Why? Because the moment we, got, we want to take control of our own lives, we become worshipers of our own lives. I don't need God. I am my own God. I, I, I say what my destiny will look like. And I want you, church, to submit your thoughts onto the Holy Spirit and have him check your heart. Why? Because we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to Jesus, our creator, our sustainer, in whom we trust. Hmm. Are we jumping off the deep end? 
with a decision of our lives and using the word is by faith? Are we jumping off the deep end and just using the word? I'm doing it by faith. I believe God. But did God really say to jump? So the church has to understand that we have to make sure that it's not our emotions driving us and we're utilizing the church lingo of faith to go ahead and do it. We have to make sure that God is the one that is calling us into making that jump, that leap of faith. And if God says to jump, I will jump off whatever he tells me to do. If it's his will, if it's what he's telling me to do, Lord, if you're calling me to a deeper level and this is what it looks like, it looks scary, but if it's you, I want it to be you and confirm and reconfirm. I'm going to pray about it, but Lord, it, let it be led by you. Don't use the faith word when it's actually your flesh or what you want. Because that looks right according to me. Church, be careful to use the language of faith to benefit what we want. Lord, am I right before you in thinking this? And it's always that submission before God. Submitting our actions, our thoughts. Lord, what is it you want? And if it's your will, by faith. I will take that leap of faith. I will jump off the deep end. And why we use that phrase, the deep end? Because the deep end is scary. Yo, jumping off the deep end. I want to tell you a story real quick. When I was an adolescent, it was an actual church trip for a baptism. I don't know if you know, Suntan Lake. So we used to do our baptism out there. And it was like an annual thing. And my, my cousin, I remember him saying, there was a, 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 a slide into the, into the lake, into the water. And it was like one short one and one extreme one. And you know that if you don't know how to swim, you go to the short end. I'm safe. And he came to an idea, to a thought. Yo, let's try the higher one. And it looks fun. It looks amazing. No, no, no. It's not that deep. You'll be all right. And we, we go ahead and we make the line and we're just, we, <laughs> I mean, you don't, when you're a kid, you don't, you don't feel that fear. You're like, let's go. And especially if you're a male, you got that adrenaline going through you. <laughs> so we go. And all of a sudden he goes first. <laughs> and I don't even see him. I'm just excited for myself. He's over there. And I jump, I slide, splash. And all of a sudden, I'm looking for the floor, the floor, and the floor, and where is the floor, the floor? He's also with the same action, looking for the floor, the floor. And I was like, when we came out, I was suffering. We made, I don't know how the heck we got it to, 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 to the edge of the pool. And we was like, yo, that was crazy. You don't know how to swim? Nah, me neither, bro. And we jumped off the deep end, not knowing. We almost drowned and killed ourselves because we thought with our youth and our adrenaline, that's enough. And by faith, we did it. <laughs> but where the heck is the floor? Sometimes we take a leap of faith and God did not say jump. It looks good. It looks attractive. I mean, and, I mean let, let, let's put this together. There was a lifeguard on duty. And he kept asking, are you okay? Yeah. Oh, just drinking mad water. Oh, yeah. And, but he was noticing. But he was watching. Are you okay? Yeah, we're okay. And he's watching until he, we made it to the edge and he let us go. I feel the Holy Spirit saying, sometimes we jump off the deep end and God doesn't say, but because of his mercy and grace, he's watching and he's asking, are you okay? But he won't let you die. Are you okay? Are you okay? 
But God is merciful that with our mistakes, he knows what's best for us. And he is ready to save us. Because why? We trust and we remain faithful unto him. And sometimes we make some crazy, dumb decisions. How many can, you, come on, you can say amen? Some of us make some bad decisions. And the grace and the mercy of God has to come. Mira, mijo, ven acá. Easy. Did you learn your lesson yet? Okay. Stop it. And that's when also the correction of God has to come and embrace the correction from God. Because God corrects those in whom he loves. Amen. Amen. Be careful not to commit spiritual suicide with a decision that is not what God said. Be careful not to commit spiritual suicide with a decision God did not say for you to take. So what happens when we take a, a, we make a decision, and we see this in Genesis with Adam and Eve, they, make a, they made a decision to eat from the tree that God said not to eat, and it became spiritual death for them because of their disobedience to God saying, don't eat of that tree. It was a dumb decision that affected their spiritual lives. Wow, pastor, you said that? Yes. Sometimes we commit spiritual suicide because of a bad decision not led by God. Submit your decisions unto God. Even if it looks scary, trust the Lord if he said so. And I want church for you to remain faithful. And not listen to the voice of culture, but listen to the voice of Jesus. That if he says yes, he will bless you and lead you every step of the way. Even if it looks difficult, God will lead you every step of the way. Every step of the way. Satan can use whatever sounds like faith or whatever looks like God. He can use that. What sounds like faith what sounds like God, and distort it. Because he tried it, and he did it in the garden as well. Did God really say? And the answer is, yes, God said. Because I pledge allegiance to what God said, not what Satan says. I pledge my allegiance with truthful and honor because I am honorable, honoring and trusting in the Lord my God. No matter what the world wants to say, whatever the devil wants to say, the Lord said not to and I will not do it. The Lord says do it, I will do it. And to him be the glory and all of the praise. Why? Because the devil comes to deceive. He is the deceiver. Be very watchful. Be very watchful. Jesus did what the Father told him and showed him to do. And Jesus constantly repeated that. I only do and say what I've seen my Father do and say. That is what I do. That is my mission. My mission is to do what the Father has told me to do because I've seen it. And I've heard his voice, and I come to do his will and his purpose. And we follow whatever Jesus says to do. How many of you say amen? Prepare for worship. I want you to understand that we prepare everything that we are. Who I am, my, me, I am, we are. The temple of the Holy Spirit. We prepare ourselves for worship. And I want to encourage you to prepare every aspect of your life to worship King Jesus and only him. In Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, verse 8, towards the conclusion of this amazing, epic battle in the desert with Jesus and Satan. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, I will give you all these things if you will fall down and worship me. El Señor reprenda en el nombre de Jesús. Then Jesus told him, go away, Satan. I love that assurance there. 
Go away, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. I want, to, I want us all to repeat that together. That's what Jesus said to Satan. Then Jesus told him, go away, Satan, by name. He called him out. For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. I want you to repeat that not only today, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Continuously say, I will worship the Lord my God and only serve him. I pledge allegiance to my king. Why? Because he deserves it all. Get away from me, Satan. Go away when temptation comes. Go away, Satan. I worship God and God alone. Whatever the splendor is being offered, you'll make more money. You'll be happier. You'll be this. You'll be that. If it's not God's will, go away from me, Satan. Don't distract me. Don't take me away from the purpose of God. Why? Because I will only worship and honor the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I pledge allegiance to my King. Praise the living name of Jesus. But I want to stop here real quick. And he says this, I will give you these things, this is what Satan says, if you will fall down and worship me. Yep. Do you know what that means? It's a posture of surrendering. It's getting low to the floor. I, I mean, don't judge those of us who lay on the ground as we worship. Because it's a physical posture of surrendering unto God. The laying out, the falling to our knees, on our faces. That's an act of, you don't need all that, Pastor. Sometimes you do for your own good. It humbles us. Who's looking at me? I don't care. I'm going to humble myself before the king. Why you got to get on your knees that it takes all that? Yes, it does. Why you got to worship so loud? Oh, you don't know what I've been through. It takes all of that and more. Why? Because when the temptation comes, Jesus just showed us here. He says, go away, Satan. There's an authority there. But why can't we use this? Lord, I will worship you no matter who is around me because I depend on you. But he, Satan here says, if you go low to the ground and worship me, the, the deeper study of worship me, go down to the ground and worship me, the scripture says it like this. It's an homage. What's an homage unto, God, unto someone? A special honor or respect shown publicly. It's a public worship. He didn't say go in your closet. He wanted Jesus to publicly, in an open desert, to go down and worship Satan. It's an homage that is an honor and respect publicly. When we do an homage to someone, it's a, it's a respect, it's a, it's a birthday, it's a, it's a, it's a triumph, it's an anniversary. And, and we honor this person for all of his accolades. And he's written 17,000 books and is amazing. They are all amazing. And so it's a respect. And this is what Satan wanted Jesus to do for him. To pay respect and honor and acknowledgement publicly. And Jesus refuted and said, no, 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 no. I will only worship my God and serve him alone. <laughs> Homage is shown or demonstrated of respect or dedication to someone or something. It's a dedication. It's a, I surrender all that I have for you. And the Lord said, no, no, no. I will only worship my God and my Savior. How many things have we been tempted with? And the devil says, only if you were to give me that moment. Hmm. 
And this is a heart check tonight, today. What have you been giving homage to? What have we been giving attention to? It could be knowingly or unknowing, on purpose or not. But I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to us today to prepare ourselves for worship. To prepare ourselves to honor God. Get rid of the things that don't belong and ask the Holy Spirit to bring in what does belong in our lives. How do we prepare to bring glory and honor to God? Today, is it, this is what, what, what Jesus says to Satan. And today, it is, I want us to say what Jesus has said to Satan. Go away, Satan, and I will worship my God and only serve him. I, I want us to understand that, to be reminded of this, that God is our king and we will serve him and him alone. I don't want you leaving today from this place. Oh, that was a good word. No, no, no. Put it into practice. Why? Because temptation will always come. The doubt will always come. I want you to play, put into action when the moment comes when you're in the desert or challenged even with the word of God. You bring it back to the word of God and say, no, no, no. I will worship my God and only my God. And I will only pledge my allegiance to my king. I want us to stand firm in the truth of who God is. No matter who brings what or says what, I, we depend on Jesus and Jesus alone. Don't fall for what the world offers in exchange for your worship. Don't fall for that. Don't fall for the trap of the enemy. Whatever it is that's being offered, present it unto God first. Lord, is this your will for my life? And I want to add also, it's important that we understand that we have a church community that we're not alone, that we can ask for prayer from our brothers and sisters. I'm making a decision. Can you join me in prayer? Why? Because prayer is powerful. It's not humiliating. It empowers us because we are encouraged with, by our brothers and sisters to continue on moving forward. And if God says no, God says no, but if God says yes, God says yes, but we together can glorify God because we are all together believing for our brothers and sisters. You don't have to pray alone. We can trust on one another and let God use us for the glory of his name. Don't be ashamed, church, for asking for prayer. Don't be embarrassed for asking for prayer. Don't think, well, pastor's too busy. The leaders, what? they're not going to pay attention to me. No, no, no. Those are lies of the enemy. Ask and you shall receive. Receive. Knock on the door. What else? You, can you lose anything? No, you cannot lose anything. You will gain trustworthy, believing people of God who can come along your side and believe with you for God's purpose. How many of you say amen? Pledge allegiance today to Jesus. Pledge your allegiance to Jesus today. In conclusion, I want the worship team to come up. In conclusion, I want you guys to go to Mark chapter 12, verse 28. Mark chapter 12, verse 28. And I love the ministry of Jesus because he came to show the truth. He came to also bring clarity. And whenever you need clarity on whatever subject, you bring it to the word of God. You bring it in prayer. And here we see in Mark chapter 12, verse 28, and we're going to pick it up from there. One of the scribes approaching, when he heard them debating and saw that Jesus answered them well, because Jesus always answers well. How many of you say amen? He asked him, which command is the most important of all? And I want you to catch that word there, command. A command is what we have to do before God. What command is the most important of all? We were talking to, he's speaking to Jewish people here. They had a lot of commands to follow. Many laws to follow. Regulations and this and that and the other. Which command is the most important of all? And this is something that we have to also ask. Jesus answered. And Jesus always answers. The most important is, 
Listen, Israel. You see how he, I love how he even breaks it down. Listen. Pay attention. Oh, hey, hey, listen. Israel. At this time, he's speaking to the people of Israel. But I want you to understand he's also speaking to us, those of us who believe. He's, believe, he, he, he's speaking to us today through his word. Israel, the, but the people of God. How many of you are people of God? How many of you are people of God? So listen carefully. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He dropped the dime there. Something real quick for us to catch. For the love, for the Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Not halfway, not only on Sundays. With all your hearts, with all your soul, with all your mind. And with all your strength. That's everything. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other command greater than these. Don't miss this last sentence right here. There is no other command greater than these. Jesus says, Two commands. There's no greater than these. Pay attention. Because if we love our God with all our might, with everything that we are, our mind are subjected to God, everything, I worship you, Lord. We cannot miss out loving God and loving his people. We cannot Stay loving God, which is how we're able to love others. Don't miss it. Because it, it goes together. Because the reason why Jesus came to earth, it was for love. To rescue his creation from death, from sin and death. And give us life and life in abundance. And he says here, follow these commands. This command is what? Love God with everything you got. With everything. Say it with me. With everything. And love your neighbor as yourself. Because this truth cannot stay just with you. You got to spread this love of God that has come over us. Over our mind, soul, and spirit, and everything about us. Because it's all about love. To go on into all the world and show the same love for God to rescue those in need of salvation. How many of you know that there are people that are in need of salvation? I want to tell you the truth. That was you one day. That was you and I one day needing of a Savior. And Jesus himself revealed his truth to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Brought conviction to our hearts to show his love for you and I. I mean, I don't know about you, that moment that you had that encounter with Jesus, how everything was washed away. And you felt brand new. You felt a weight being lifted. You felt like you came with a baggage on your shoulders and all of a sudden you left a light. And what's, how, how did you express this love for God? With worship. And worship is Spending time and dedication in the presence of God, but also loving on people as well. Because we pray, we come together for the love of God, and because we love one another. No matter what need we may have, whatever difficulties we're going through in life, we pay homage to the Lord. We pay our respect. We pledge our allegiance, our honor and respect to God. God works with us, but even sometimes as he works with us, we can be used for the glory of his name. We're not perfect. We don't have it all together. But one thing we do know, that in our imperfection, we can come freely unto the presence of God. And he receives us as sons and daughters. But I believe that God wants to save a lot of other people using your life, your story, because you have a purpose. You have a purpose. And today, 
I want to encourage you to pledge your allegiance to King Jesus, the Savior and Redeemer of our lives.